Straight ahead are New Mexico State Sports Weekly. With the Aggie football spring game this weekend, we sit down with strength and conditioning director Don Decker to check in on the team's progress in the weight room. Aggie softball is approaching 40 wins and the team has already clinched the one seat in the WAC tournament. Head coach Kathy Rodolph will join us to talk about her team's conference domination. First year head baseball coach Brian Green has his team playing well after a series win against Grand Canyon. Coach Green will stop by to help us recap his team's big offensive weekend and we'll show highlights from the 12-2 win on Friday. We finish up today's episode with women's basketball assistant Erica Hughes. Coach will help us preview the offseason and give us an update on recruiting. It's a great day to be an Aggie. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Welcome to New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Adam Young. NM State football is now only a few days away from their annual spring game after a great offseason in the newly renovated weight room. Today we're joined by the man in charge of the Aggie strength program in the offseason. Here with me now is the Director of Strength and Conditioning, Don Decker. Uh, Coach, a great offseason in the weight room. How has this new weight room impacted what you guys can do with the athletes? Well, um, first of all, I just want to say how fortunate we are to have that facility and, and the gift from Messiah Valley Trucking and Royal Jones and, and their commitment to giving our athletes you know, a great opportunity to do what they came to New Mexico State University to do and that is achieve their goals and dreams. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when you have a softball player walk in in the fall and take one look at the facility and said, can I sleep in here? You know, <laughs> that, that, that makes a statement. But uh, it's been outstanding. The, the technology that we have in the room, um, there was only one of, we're one of 11 schools to have this technology and we're the only one to have 24 units, which we have it on every one of our racks. And, and it has helped so much in terms of motivation, in terms of teaching, um, the engagement of the athlete. Mm -hmm. Uh, the nutrition area that we were able to develop with granite countertops and and a place for them to you know in the morning sometimes it looks like uh, IHOP in there you know <laughs> with bagels being toasted and all that kind of stuff so um, it's been a lot of fun to be a part of it to, to watch the change and to watch the buy-in and the belief um, and the, the value that it's created to the athlete. Looking at football in particular Doug Martin said this offseason was huge for his program especially those freshmen that were going to be sophomores what did you see? Well um, I, I wanted to redshirt them, you know, <laughs> and of course we couldn't. And, uh, you know, so, so this was really the first time I had a chance to really get my hands on them and really try to, as I would say, move the needle in a positive direction in terms of their size and strength and speed and those kind of things. And so um, over the, the course of the last nine or ten weeks, there's been some phenomenal things happen, you know, in terms of their training. And I was telling you earlier that, you know, on the defensive side of the ball is where we had to play so many young guys. Mm -hmm. And um, we looked at averages and we, we probably gained somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 to 20 pounds per man mm -hmm. with those freshmen going through that program, which is not unheard of when you, when, you know, this is a time where you know, their testosterone is going crazy. And, and if, if you're feeding them and you're training them the right way, they're going to gain weight. They're going to get stronger. They're going to get faster. And, and watching those bodies out there on the field now versus this, this fall, like you look at a, uh, a Busby who weighed 252 last year and now he's playing at 275. That's a different guy out sure. there. You know, uh, uh, Stody Bradley who was playing at 228 and now he's 243. You know, a Dalton Harrington that came in weighing 198, played the whole season right about there, sometimes as low as 193, now he weighs 215. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to name a few, but that's exciting and that's part of the process. And we get through spring practice uh, on Saturday, then we turn our head towards the summer, get another good eight weeks and get ready for the fall. Now for the freshmen coming in, is there a big wow factor when recruits walk through there? Oh, it, it, it's it, to hear their feedback, you know, you just wish everybody could hear uh, the, the impact that this has made, uh, not only to our current athletes, but the, to the athletes that's coming through the doors, you know, checking out NMSU. Um, and they've, we've asked them at times, compare this to some of the other visits you've mm -hmm. had. And of course, I won't name any names, but you know, they are so, you know, wowed by just the presence of the room. But then when you get them over there and you get in their wheelhouse with that technology and those iPads and we're completely paperless now, we don't carry workout cards around and those kind of things, it takes it to another level. As Coach said, the annual spring football game is this Saturday and we know you'll be there. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. When New Mexico State Sports Weekly returns, head softball coach Kathy Rodolph will stop by the studio. Don't go anywhere. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly.
and m State softball enters the weekend with an impressive record of 37 and 13. With their win last Friday at Bakersfield, the Aggies have now clinched the number one seed at the WAC tournament, which is held here in Las Cruces. Here with me now is head coach Kathy Rodolph. Coach, congrats on the one seed. Thank you very much. We've worked very hard all year to achieve that, but we're definitely not stopping there. We, we want to go for the regular season championship this weekend. You clinch it very early. Does that change anything you do here in the final couple weeks of the regular season? Absolutely not. Our, our goal has been postseason and to be that mid-major that could get to the World Series all year long. So we're going to continue to play pitch by pitch and try to get better with each and every day. Have you been surprised at all about <clears throat> how consistent your team has been from the start to now? Well, you know, a lot of that is attributed to the leadership of our seniors. Mm -hmm. I feel like they absolutely felt like we fell short last year and have come out and worked very diligently to change that for this year. You mentioned earlier off the year, pitching has been very good as of late. It's been a few pitchers, too, that have contributed. Well, you know, to me, it's the first time that I've truly had a staff in Carista, Dallas, and Michaela, and each one of them give a different look, and each one of them, uh, the team feels very comfortable fielding behind. Is it imperative to stay sharp in all aspects here in the final couple weeks? Oh, absolutely. I, you know, this past weekend we dropped one to Bakersfield, and, and I've got to tip my hat to Kelsey Monroe. She did a great job in the circle for them, and what it did is it, it kind of recentered us to get back out this week and to do everything that we can in practice to make sure that we come out attacking come Friday night. The offensive numbers have been eye-popping this year. Is it a combination of good recruiting and then good teaching when those players get here? Oh, absolutely. Cad completely runs my offense, and I don't believe I we've co-coached for 18 years, and I've never been in a place that we're not in the top 10 in the nation offensively in every category, and that's all, uh, you know, her, her methods, her teaching. But she also goes after the type of players that fit into her system and then tries to keep it very simple for them. When you look at that offense individually, you're probably going to have the player of the year at the end of the year. Can you pick <clears throat> one player? You know, it's going to be really a big challenge. Uh, Stacy's done a phenomenal job. Fiona Fanile's done a phenomenal job. We've got 12 kids hitting home runs. Any given week, one, you know, rises to the top. Um, it, it'll be, and we don't get to vote on mm -hmm. our own kids, so it'll be up to the conference if we're fortunate enough to get that. What's the chemistry been like all year? Oh, this team loves each other. When we were um, on the bus ride uh, from Bakersfield down to LAX, they're playing card games and they get together. They make up their own games in pregame. They, they hang out together. It's been a very fun team. And that's huge to your success, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. When, you, when you're traveling with 20 girls, you know, it, it, that can go one of two ways. It can either be an unbelievably fun time or a miserable time. And this is just a fun team. Finally, Coach, how big is it to have the conference tournament at home in Las Cruces? Oh, I think it's huge. One, it's finals week, and we absolutely care about academics. We have 100% graduation rate, so we're going to be able to take finals for three days, which is usually mm -hmm. not the case. We cram them into one day, so we're excited, but we also love playing on our field and in front of our fans. Come out to the NM State Softball Complex this weekend when the Aggies take on Grand Canyon in a three-game home series. Coach, good luck this weekend. Thank you very much. After the break, we'll show highlights from the Aggies' 12-2 win against Grand Canyon in the series opener last Friday. That comes your way next on New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Thanks to a $1.4 million donation from Mike and Judy Johnson in the offseason, Presley Askew Field has gone through numerous changes before and during this season. Aggie baseball had a great weekend last weekend against Grand Canyon, winning Friday and Sunday. And on Friday, the Aggies defeated Grand Canyon 12-2. They also had a pregame ceremony dedicating the field to Mike and Judy Johnson. Let's take a look at the highlights from Friday's win against Grand Canyon.
288. The two and one. Max swings and he loops it short center field. Long run for the shortstop and it lands in. He's ahead of Clipper, one and two. Great chance for Joe, who chops it towards third base. In the hole, though, and Brian Green's going to wave in Daniel Johnson. Throw home is cut off, and the Aggies strike first here tonight. An RBI single for the Las Cruces native Joe Corper. Pitch on the way to camp. He swings, and he loops it short center field. This one could be trouble, and this one falls in. Brian Green holds up Quinton Mack, and the bases are now loaded for the Aggies. A pair of blitz singles here in the first inning. He swings, and he cranks it deep to left center field towards the scoreboard, and this one's gone. A home run for Hermanison. It's a grand slam, and it's a five spot here in the first inning for the Aggies. Holy smokes. That is the third home run of the year. It's shown to Garrison Schwartz. He chops it over the mound. Out of the reach of the second baseman, A.J. Duran. Bolting for third base is Smith. The throw by Mack is on the money, and they got him there. What a throw by Quinton Mack in center field. Quinton holding the payoff. Runner is off. Call third strike throw to second base on the money, and they got it. Strike him out, throw him out. Brent Hermanison has also been outstanding defensively recently. And now they made the transition to Division I. Haskins pulls it down the right field line. This one's hit well, and it's gone. Another home run for Kim Haskins. He hits his fourth home run this year, his second in his last three games, and the Aggies lead by a half dozen. $4 million to the Aggie baseball program for facility upgrades. Heron Dean to fly Steve. ball deep to right field. It's over the head of Schwartz. Camper. All right. That's going to score two runs. It's a ground rule double for Lincoln Heron Dean. Mike Johnson comes in and gives the Aggies two runs. Another payoff. Chopped over the mound. Tough play for Heron Dean. Heron Dean gloves, throws, and he got it. Against the 10 and 1 Lopes. Mack hits it deep out to right center field. This is going to touch down off the wall. You better bet that Brian Green's going to wave at Daniel Johnson. The relay throw is offline, and the Aggies win. What a way to finish this one. 12 to 2 is our final. After his team's big weekend series win against Grand Canyon, head baseball coach Brian Green is with us when you come back on New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Welcome back to New Mexico State Sports Weekly. NM State Baseball is on a roll. The Aggies used a big series to take two of three from Grand Canyon last weekend in Las Cruces. NM State scored 26 runs and hit 402 as a team over the weekend to pick up the series win. Head coach Brian Green is with us. Coach, most coaches have a mentality going into a series. Let's find a way to get a series win. Same with you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, do everything you can. And, uh, you know, we made the statement to our team, Adam, as you know, we, we switched up the rotation. Uh, we put Billy in the starting role, we put Riley in the, in the bullpen, and Billy comes up big, does that, but we're, we're trying to do anything we can just to find a way to win, you know, and find series wins, and obviously a great weekend for the program. I mentioned those numbers offensively, impossible to yeah. single out one player. It was a team yeah. approach, wasn't it? Awesome. Uh, you know, kind of went with the stock lineup for the whole weekend, but I mean, we, we flat out hit, and we've put in the time. The, the best thing about that is the guys that are truly grinding in practice, the results are coming. You know, Humphreys has been going for a couple of weeks. He hasn't found holes. He finally gets through in terms of getting some hits. But between Ump, Joe, who's been at it all year, QMAC has a monster weekend. Duran has a great weekend. Uh, Hermanison again, Haskins. I mean, it was a pretty awesome weekend for us offensively. A 12 to 2 win Friday. Yeah. You always preach quality at bats. Was that the best job you did all year in that area? No doubt. For the weekend, we were over 62 percent, and that's as a team. If you're doing that, you're going to win a lot of baseball games regardless of how you pitch and play defense because you're going to wear the opposition down. But actually, Friday's quality of bat percentage was 71% for the team. Seven innings, uh, quality of bats all over the yard. And we grinded their pitcher out, and that was, that was huge for us. For us, Adam, and, you know, where we would like to take the program is obviously to be a pitching and defense and, and have balance offensively. But for this particular team, this particular year, it's, the offense is going to really be going to have to be the core for us, and this weekend was kind of a testament to that. 
Speaking of quality, you're looking for quality pitching, and you got two good starts. Yeah. Friday, Billy Connor, Sunday, Riley Barr. Awesome. You know, and it, it's funny how those things both go hand in hand. You know, we, we, we go with Billy, so we don't have to go to Riley. The offense creates the 10 run cushion. The whack and the crazy 10 mm -hmm. run rule goes into play. We don't use Riley. He comes back on Sunday, gives us a great effort, uh, allows it to get to a bullpen where we get into the seventh inning. Kraft shows up. Bob's parents are here from Oklahoma, and he goes the <laughs> distance, three innings of relief. So, but those Friday and Sunday outings were huge for us, and they were great efforts. Not only did you get a series win, you also beat a really good program. They have wins against Tennessee, yeah. Kansas. They swept Kyle Pally. This is a good program you beat. Probably the best team in the league, just in terms of talent. You know, I know they're in second place, but we've seen Seattle, Bakersfield, Sac State, Grand Canyon. We've seen Northern Colorado. My opinion is not even close. You know, Andy does a great job. The staff does a great job. But I just think they have the best players in our league, looking at it just from mm -hmm. the teams that we played. But I told our guys, guys, you just put it to, uh, we had two huge offensive performances, the best team in the league. Right. We just took a, a series win from them. So in terms of confidence, here you go. You know, here's mm -hmm. probably the best team in the league, and you just kind of took it to them two out of three games. So we got four left. Let's see if we can get downhill. Finally, Coach, the standings at this point of the year. Do you pay any attention to them? None. Uh, for us, it's just we've preached all year, get better, get better, get better. We feel like we're getting better. You know, mm -hmm. you, you've seen us. I mean, we got a chance to take two at Seattle. We got a chance to take two at Sacramento. Mm -hmm. We just don't, mm -hmm. you know, but we're, our play is better. The quality of the at-bats are better for us. Keep that going. Put our head down. Keep grinding. We look up. Hopefully we're in Mesa at the end of the year. All right. The Aggies head on the road to the Windy City this weekend. It's the Aggies and the Chicago State Cougars in Chicago. Coach, best of luck. Thanks, Ed. When we come back on New Mexico State Sports Weekly, we'll be joined by women's basketball assistant coach Erica Hughes. That's after this on New Mexico State Sports Weekly. M State women's basketball is coming off one of the best seasons in program history. The Aggies won 22 games and made their first NCAA attorney appearance in 27 years. With all but one player returning next year, the expectations are high as the Aggies enter the offseason. Here with me now is assistant coach Erica Hughes. Coach, a month after the season, has it all sunk in yet? Um, I think so, just a little bit, especially um, recruiting-wise, yeah. calling future prospects, talking to them, having them acknowledge the fact that they saw yeah. us on TV, you know, NCAA tournament, our kids are great, they're kind of resting a little bit, so I think it's starting to sink in now. So you've seen some advantages already on the recruiting trail? Oh, definitely. Uh, people, AAU coaches throughout the year have gotten updates from us recruiting-wise, mailers, emails, um, also just making contact with them, uh, ESPN3 being, you know, ESPNU, yeah. all that exposure really helped our program. That TV exposure down the stretch, that's rare in women's basketball, isn't it? Oh, very, very. Uh, for us to be able to have that uh, in um, in Las Vegas and being able to to get out uh, to Arizona, to Texas, especially in Texas where we highly, you know, mm -hmm. Brianna Freeman, Ryan yeah. Mack, all those, all those recruits, so it's great. With just one player departing, one senior leaving, mm -hmm. what are some needs you have right now recruiting-wise? Um, a point guard. We definitely need a point guard. Shanice Davis has set the tone uh, this last season. Um, her leaving and being a senior next year, we're going to have to really comb, you know, get Zaire ready for that next year and then also bringing in a freshman to kind of sit, mm -hmm. kind of watch, get used to everything and then coming in as well as bigs. We can never have too many bigs. With the players you have coming in next year, one of those bigs, Taisha Taylor, who are some other names that could make an impact? Um, Brooke Salas is actually out of California. She's a 5'11 guard. Um, actually, for what we heard, her coaches were saying she's actually grown a couple of inches, so mm. she might be six feet. Um, she's kind of going to be our Sasha Weber uh, as we go forward when Sasha graduates. Um, and then also Geneva Toyolo. She's going to mm. be a 6'2", 6'3 center. She's coming off an ACL tear, but she's done really well with rehabbing this year. Also played volleyball. Uh, should give us some force inside. With those players coming in, then the returners you have coming back, do you expect some really good competition here in the offseason? Oh, yes. Practice will be fun, <laughs> as well as watching us in games. But practice is going to be really, really high intensity. As you look towards next year, are you just trying to build on what you did this past year? I think so. I think we're really trying to look early on uh, preseason. You know, I was just talking to you earlier about volleyball and how they're scheduling. Preseason's a little bit difficult. Uh, same thing with us. You know, we want to go ahead and try and beat those U of A's and Vanderbilts and try and get some BCS schools in there and test our kids early uh, so we are prepared for the NCAA tournament uh, next year. It was a great year with 22 wins, first NCAA attorney appearance in 27 years. What was your biggest takeaway as a coach? Um, I've never been to the NCAA tournament, so even as a player uh, at USC, I never got to go. Uh, so being with Coach Track, you know, he promised me that, yeah. and uh, you know, I'm, I didn't get it as a player, but getting it as a coach, it was a great experience for our kids. 
um, you know, that really drives people ask, do you get complacent after being so successful? No, you chase that because you yeah. want to go deeper in the tournament, so it's been awesome for us. Is it easier for you to go out there and recruit now that you've had so much success? Oh, yes. I mean, it's always easy uh, recruiting to a winning program, but when you have a coach that is District 7 mm. Coach, yeah. Region Coach of the Year, uh, also a finalist for the National Coach of the Year, I mean, he makes my job really easy. You're speaking of Coach Track, and you played for Coach Track at yes. USC. You, mm -hmm. you speak very highly of him, don't you? Oh, of course I do. I better. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Coach. We appreciate it. Thanks. Tickets for Aggie baseball and softball are on sale right now. To be part of the excitement, call the Aggie Ticket Office at 575-646-1420. You can also get your tickets online at nmstatesports.com or ticketmaster.com. If you missed any part of today's show, check us out on YouTube. And also be sure to stay up to speed on social media by liking New Mexico State Athletics on Facebook and following us on Twitter. That will do it for this week's installment of New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm Adam Young saying thank you for watching and go Aggies.